was good. Thank you. And actually, that kind of leads us into the theory of aging in general. So what is your understanding of why we age? Um, and there have been some recent studies. And, and have you seen, does it, this basically confirms or, or you've made any changes based on kind of what we've seen from Dr. Katcher and, and perhaps all, also from Steve Horvath, Dr. Horvath? Yeah, so I, I work closely with Horvath and Catcher, and the, they're great friends and supporters. When you ask why do we age, the why can be on many levels. There's mm -hmm. um, Dobjansky who says nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. So always the deep cause, the deep cause of why we age is the evolutionary cause. And that's what I've focused on. I've already told you I'm not a biologist. I've learned biology in the second half of my life by the seat of my pants. Uh, I started out as a theoretical physicist and a mathematical modeler. And I brought those skills to uh, yeah. evolutionary biology and, and later to the science of aging. Um, what I have seen kind of is that even if you if you kind of thinking backwards based on so this is the end point. Um, so now we have to figure out how evolution got us here. Then you can twist that in almost any way you like, right? Because, and it's not, it's not falsifiable, right? You it's not true. It's not true. You know, I've, I've published so much, so many arguments about why the, um, why the standard theories that purport right. to explain aging in an evolutionary context are just untenable. And you, you just have to allow for an element of deliberate selection. Evolution wants a limited lifespan. You have to allow for that to explain what you see. It's, it's not as muddy as you paint it. Okay. okay. It's programmed to develop. It's programmed to mature, develop sexual maturity, leave its offspring, and then a self-destruction program turn, uh, turns on that... Uh, that wipes us out and assures that we don't overpopulate, assures that we don't disturb the ecosystem by having these wild cycles of, um, I mean, this, this, yes. is, this is my contribution to the field. And I'll just, okay. in one sentence, the reason, the evolutionary reason for aging is ecological. You can't build a stable ecosystem out of individuals that don't control their birth and death rates. You just get uh, too much violence. And this is what I've demonstrated with mathematical models so long. Uh, and th there's really no disagreement about this. Anybody who puts together these ecological models sees immediately that without aging and without birth control, birth control meaning that the individual is more fertile in times that are hard and less fertile in times of overcrowding. Without that, you get these wild population cycles leading to extinction. It's to avoid extinction through these population cycles that aging and these forms of birth control have evolved. So that's the deep reason. Okay. So, okay. So at the, at the, at the evolutionary level, then uh, it's, it's to control these swings. So how does that get, how does that happen in the body then? So then you look at the mechanism. Mm. Evolution is highly motivated to take control of the death rate. And it happens very differently in different organisms. Uh, you know how elephants die? They have, I think, there are nine sets of teeth. I'm not sure of the number. It's, it's something like nine sets of teeth. And they, you know, they're like biting off whole trees and wearing down their teeth. And each time they wear down their teeth, another set of teeth grows in. After nine sets of teeth, there is no 10th set of teeth. And they die of starvation. They can't chew anymore. That's senescence. That's what senescence looks like to an elephant. If you look, if you ask what happens to an amoeba, you get a very different story. Amoebas also have aging, and it, uh, it has to do with their, their telomeres. Uh, and it, aging is different in every animal species. In humans, it's a complex of things. Um, 
you know, I would list apoptosis, mm. programmed cell death, as um, as one component. Uh, programmed cell death is absolutely necessary. We can't do without it. Otherwise, we'd get cancer every day of the week. Uh, but programmed cell death is in overdrive as we get older and it's destroying healthy tissues in our brains and our muscles. There's inflammation. Everybody knows about inflammation. Inflammation is turning against the body and um, causing the damage that's the root cause of heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, and cancer. All, all three have roots in inflammation. Uh, um, another deep metabolic cause of of aging in humans is autoimmunity, mm -hmm. that the immune system, uh, which has been so carefully controlled to make sure that it eliminates anything that's not self and it tolerates anything that's self, it loses its differentiation. And it's, it's weaker in both ways. It tolerates microbes and that's why old people die of pneumonia it's why old people die of uh, SARS-CoV-2 and it's making the other uh, mistake as well it's attacking healthy cells in the body in relation to um, and that's where arthritis comes from and it's also a contribution to Alzheimer's disease. So there's I just wanted to actually, I want to kind of look at that, but I want to go back to one point. So you said that uh, aging is kind of different for across these different animals, and you gave the, the, the example of the elephant. Um, but uh, recently, Dr. Horvath re uh, put a paper out on BioArchive where he looked at g the, the epigenome across so many different um, mammals, yeah. and they, they're all the same, or, or they're with, with that's not, oh, that, that's not, I mean, that's, that's Sorry. not what he showed. He showed that there are some, there's some things that are some cores of the, well, why don't we go back and give your, your Would, audience some background on what he does, what he's studying, how it's related to aging, how it's related to epigenetics. And then we have the background to be able to talk about why it's interesting that it's the same, that at least a part of it overlaps in, in all the mammals that he studied. That would beginning. be good. Yeah, yeah. Let's, st let's start at the beginning. What is methylation and what is epigenetics? Um, a theory that I've had for a long time is that the root cause of aging is changes in gene expression. Mm -hmm. The root cause meaning not the evolutionary cause, but how the high up in the um, upstream of the biochemistry in the body is about gene expression, also called epigenetics. Uh, you know that certain hormones turn on and when you're in the womb, it gives tremendous growth and differentiation. And when you reach sexual maturity, all of a sudden it turns on the sex hormones and it turns off the growth hormones. And as you get older, the same thing continues and certain genes are turned on that cause self-destruction. And it's subtle. It's not like, well, the gene is on and then it's off. There, there are changes in just five or 10% of extra gene expression that throw the whole system out of balance and turn the body into having an immune system that's accurately distinguishing between the invader and the self and an immune system that's haywire and is attacking the self um, to a, a very destructive extent. E even small changes in gene expression can do that. Uh, so gene expression is controlled within the cell. Every cell needs different genes because it's a different cell. A cell in your nose has a different... Um, Need, need for different genes than a cell in your liver or a cell in a bone. They, they need different genes because they have different functions. But in addition to that, there are also changes over a lifetime. Gene expression changes not only from cell to cell, and it also changes from early to late, from development 
to maturity to aging. And gene expression is controlled by over a hundred different epigenetic mechanisms. I like to say when they discovered the genetic code, it was just as simple as they could, it could be. Three codons make one protein element, three, one amino acid. Uh, it, it was decoded in a matter of just a few years by uh, Crick. In contrast, the epigenetic system is just as complicated as it can be. There are a hundred different overlapping systems. And uh, you know that 2% of your genome is genes. What's the other 98% for? It's for deciding when to turn this gene on and when to turn it off. That's what the, the other 98% of your uh, genome is about. It, it's tremendously complicated. It has to do with the histones, the spools around which the DNA is wound, as well as the DNA itself. Get these little markers on it, the structure of the DNA. Uh, there, it's overwhelmingly complicated. One of these hundred mechanisms is methylation. It's like a, a molecular um, marker or a mo molecular decoration that's put on one of the four ATCG is put on the C that says uh, th this C is methylated and the other C isn't. And it has a control function for, um, for gene expression. And so why do we spend all this time on methylation and not on the other 99 epigenetic mechanisms, there's only one reason, because there is a cheap and efficient test for methylation. You can get a methylome for the body as cheaply as you can get a genome. It's, it's really, it's a very, uh, well, and for targeted regions, you can get it much cheaper than a genome for, uh, I guess for my data beta project, I was just quoted $55 in bulk uh, to, get, to get all the methylome that we need for all of the aging clocks. Uh, so this is a very cheap and very efficient way to look at one aspect of gene expression. And that's why we know more about methylation than we know about anything else. Um, it doesn't mean it's the most important, but it's turned out to, to have tremendous predictive value. Right. So then, so then the question is, so, so from Dr. Hubert's paper, why is it so significant that, this, uh, that there was this correlation between the, these, these markers across so many different species? So we're, we're almost there. One more point that I want to establish mm -hmm. is that in the original Horvath clock, he found meth methylation sites out of hundreds of thousands of sites. He identified 353 that are most closely correlated with age. They change the most mm -hmm. and most consistently over a lifetime. And he chose those 353. And he put together an algorithm for deciding averaging over those 353 methylations, some of which turn on and some of which turn off during a lifetime. It's not like you lose methylation, it's not like you gain methylation, but there's, there's some of each, the methylation pattern changes. And he came up with a clock. And the remarkable thing, which uh, I like to quote for its significance, you have to sit back and think about it. The, the fact is that if you want to predict how long somebody's going to live, age is a really good predictor because mortality rates rise exponentially with age. There's a doubling time, eight years. I think, I think mortality doubling in humans is, a, if I remember it right, it's every eight years, your risk of dying doubles. So, I mean, this is a, from two to four to eight to 16, a few a few cycles, you get to much higher mortality risk. Age has a lot to do with, uh, age is a very strong predictor of your risk of dying. Now he derives this methylation 
mm -hmm. clock from age alone, the algorithm that he used to derive the clock knew nothing about when these people were going to die, how sick they were, knew nothing about that. All it knew was how old it was, how old they were. And you apply this algorithm as a predictor of aging and you find a, a predictor of mortality. You find that the Horvath clock is a better predictor of mortality than age itself. So when this algorithm was derived, it only knew about age. It didn't know anything about mortality. The fact that it's a better predictor of mortality than the age profile from which it was derived tells you that methylation is upstream of aging. It tells you that methylation is a cause of aging. Mm -hmm. It's deep. It's deep. I don't yeah. expect you to just say, yeah, 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 of course. I, I mean, it took me a long yeah. time to, to sit and think this through. And I ask your readers, your listeners to, to do the same. But, the, but that's, the, that's the raw fact that's so significant. It tells mm -hmm. you that methylation is a cause of aging. And the reason that Horvath got in touch with me after this, he, he found me as one of these people who had been pushing the theory mm -hmm. that aging has its roots in epigenetics. And I, you know, I, I was eager to work with him because here he was reifying what I had been saying, actually just a couple of years earlier, I think it was 2012 that my paper was published and 2013, he came out with his aging clock. So it was validation of the idea that epigenetics is a root cause of aging. The changes in gene expression that happen over a lifetime are a reason that we get old and die. So, uh, that already is, is strong corroboration of, a, of an evolutionary theory that says aging is selected for its own sake. Uh, but now add to that this recent finding, which just a few weeks ago, that some of this, these methylation changes are common to all mammals. Um, I guess mice and whales probably diverged sometime I'm guessing 100 million years ago, 80 million years ago. I think they'd already diverged by the time the, of the last um, big, the dinosaur die off 65 million years ago. Uh, so these changes in gene expression have been preserved by evolution over this long, long period of time when so many things change. I mean, you gotta change a lot to make a mouse into a whale, right? And so you can't say evolution it doesn't care. E evolution is working hard to make a mouse into a whale or to make a whale into a mouse um, to differentiate mammals to that extent. And yet some core things were preserved in that process. The things that are most important to, to evolution are preserved during that process. And what you learn is one of those things, considered as important as, as any of these other conserved genes, one of these things is the process that leads to aging. This is an evolutionarily conserved mechanism over at least uh, tens, of, tens of millions of years. And you know, as a as a footnote, we already knew that there are mechanisms of aging in yeast cells um, that are related to insulin, and insulin is a primary driver of aging in humans. And that's not millions of years; that's billions of years since yeast cells and humans shared a common ancestor, or at, a, about a billion years. Right. Yes. Uh, that's really interesting. And yeah, I hadn't thought about all of that in, in quite that way. But um, so epigenetics. Yeah, so I, I, maybe I need to do to oh. apologize to, to people or to ask them to turn off the video and stop and think for a few minutes. These are new ideas. They're new ideas. That, that I, I'm st stating them pretty glibly at this point. But when they were new to me, it took months for me to ab absorb this and to... to decode the meanings that were in here. And I, I don't expect you to just 
uh, say, oh, oh <laughs> that's fine. Move on <laughs> to the next point. Yeah. Right. But certainly, um, you know, I find the, the, the epigenetic clock and the fact that the epigenetic clock is a clock, that it works like clockwork, give or take, um, is compelling that there is some process that is driving, continues to drive us in that direction, right? It's, it's not random. You, we can say it's not random because it, it's like Dr. Katcher said, it's always the same genes that get turned on or off and on as you get older. And so um, there must be some process behind that. And, and so it kind of makes sense that it is programmed. People talk about epigenetic dysregulation and people who are into a damaged model of aging say, oh, uh, the gene expression becomes more randomized as we get older. Um, and you can't make a clock out of hmm. random changes. The changes, there are some, there are random changes. It's certainly true what they're saying that half of what happens to our genomes as we get older, what ha half of what happens to methylation is that it just becomes dysregulated and uh, it's arbitrary. It's different in you it just, and, and from me, my dysregulation is different from your dysregulation. So we know that it's arbitrary, but the other half is directed. It's very consistent. And that's why you can create a methylation clock. You can't create a clock out of random changes. You need directed changes. And uh, those directed changes are the programmed part of aging. Right. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.